All right, so in this episode here, we're going to be working with Dolly. Dolly's a four-year-old mare. And she's a real high-energy horse, so we've just pulled her out, and uh, I'm going to be warming her up here a little bit, just allowing her to move her feet. And uh, she's pretty fresh right here, as you can see. Uh, really kind of wants to move around and play. She's a real high-energy horse, so I'm just going to do a few things to see if I can get to where I can direct her a little bit better and give her some ideas on where to go and see if I can get her thinking about what I'm asking her to do a little bit more. So you notice one big thing I'm working on is to get those hind quarters to step over using a 12 foot lead. And I wanna make sure I can get those hind quarters to roll over. Right there, see that stick and string, see that stick acts like my tail. I can ask her to step around me and then see if I can get those hind quarters to roll over right there. And then real gentle, I'm gonna ask that front end to step over. I don't wanna get her running around back and forth. That's not the idea here. I'm not trying to chase her back and forth and wear her out. This is not a wearing process. This is a process to get to where she's thinking about what I'm thinking about. When she looks a little more relaxed, I'm gonna take the pressure off, I'm gonna rest. I wanna see if I can get her to, to to sort of dance with me here a little bit. This is kind of the horseman's dance. You'd like to see if you can get your horse to act like a partner. So I'm gonna try different things and get to where the horse starts to synchronize with me a little bit more. So we'll play with different obstacles. There we go. Now with this, this type of horse here is a fairly confident horse, but she's a fairly high energy horse as well. And so we're looking to increase our obedience we want the bonding, we want the rapport, but we want to increase the obedience as well. And we need to get obedience without acting like a drill sergeant, without losing that rapport or that bond. So we think we need to get her to respond to pressure appropriately. A lot of horse training is all just about getting a horse to respond to pressure appropriately. So you can see how she moves back and forth, but it's really not an appropriate response. It's she kind of overdoes things. She kind of runs around and moves her feet. And you got to have some moves here. With this kind of a horse, you got to be like Karate Kid. You got to have a lot of moves. Most people just have one or two moves, and they can only make about one, one or two moves at a time. So the horse has more moves than they do. I'm not really sure what I was talking about right there. I'm talking about something. So what you're seeing is just, uh, I just pulled her out and turned the camera on it. And what you're seeing is real time, so this is not not edited. Any edits you see are just me going to get a sip of coffee or something. So you get a chance to see how I'd work with this horse. Get her warmed up, prepared to ride. So this is her right here. This is be her second month of training. Prior to this, she was never ridden. I believe she had an English saddle on, no bridle. Uh, never had a bridle, never had a rider. So... I don't go into this session with any expectations, but I'm looking to reward obedience. So see how she's starting to relax already? She's licking the lips right there. She's starting to let down. So this is probably only 10 minutes into the session here already. And she's starting to let down. So she'll step around me, roll those hind quarters over like that. So as far as obedience drills, you want to get those hind quarters and fore quarters to step around both directions. You need the horse to be able to get to where you can direct their feet. If you think of the basics, the basics are really just being able to control the parts of the horse on the ground through feel. So you think about getting that horse to where you can move the hindquarters, move the forequarters, turn left, turn right, stop, back up, go forward and stand still. So we're just trying to see if we can kind of influence these little behaviors. The idea is to make a game out of it. And get to where it's it's not a drill, it's not a training exercise, or just you're trying to see if you can influence that horse's behavior. You're trying to work the mind. There we go. So now I'm gonna see if I can get those hind quarters and fore quarters working a little bit better. See, I'm gonna just real gentle, see if I can just support there a little bit with that stick and string, move that hind quarters over, and just have her stop and relax. Maybe just gently back up, move that front quarter around, and see how little it would take right there. See, if I put that pressure behind her, she ought to roll over behind it and get stopped and get straight. And then wait for me, see? See, you can only gain ground when the horse is waiting on you. 
See that horse starts to wait for me a little more. She starts to get curious about me there. She reaches out and smells me. She's starting to get curious. What's up with this guy? See, to start with, she wasn't so interested in synchronizing with me. She was kind of wanting to play, wanting to buck around, fart and kick, be a young green horse. Now she's starting to get relaxed. She's starting to do what I ask her to do and give me the appropriate response. See, now I'm going to see if I can stand still and do less and encourage her to, to do more. So this is what we call a neutral circle. Where the, the idea here is to do less and have the horse do more and more and more for you while you do less and less. Instead of you doing more and more and the horse does less and less. That's what you'd see typically in lunging. So horses, just like humans, hate backseat drivers. So they hate to be micromanaged. And we humans are kind of control freaks. We're pretty autocratic about things. So the idea is to learn how to stop micromanaging your horse. So allow your horse to find the idea. Don't, don't fix them. Don't make it happen. I'll use that ball as a target so that I can drive my horse and get the horse interested in different things. We try to be provocative in the arena here. See, working online builds feel in the horse. Working at liberty builds a bonding. The horse seeks you as relief, and the horse learns to follow the power of suggestion. One of the advantages of groundwork is that you could see what's taking place. You can see the feet. Whereas you couldn't see that when you ride. You have to be able to feel what's taking place. But the advantage under saddle is that you have two reins and two legs. Here I've just got a halter and a stick. And so groundwork is extremely beneficial as long as there's a feel that's being developed between the horse and the rider. So now I've got her on a longer line here. So twice the, the distance here. I've got a 22-foot rope. I had a 12-foot rope before. 2 times 12 is 22 see if I can get her to step back. So I'm going to wiggle that rope a bit, throw a few waves down the rope. At first, I'm not going to make the snap move, and then if she doesn't quite give me it there. I had to kind of bump her a little bit there to get her to try. And now I'll bring her back in to see how little it would take to get her to come back. Hey, she, she doesn't drag on me to come back in. She comes back in just off a of suggestion, but right there she kind of got off course, though. There we go, and I'll kind of rub her there and try that a few more times. Good, see, see if I can get her interested in that ball. So the idea is to get your horse to play different games here. Make it interesting for your horse. Can you work with your horse in a way that they don't feel that they're being trained? They don't feel that they're doing drills. So can you be, can you be provocative for your horse? Get your horse to put effort in. So you need to get response with respect. Right there she left with a little more energy than what I had in mind, so I went ahead and push those hindquarters over. See, I tip the nose and I roll that hindquarter over. The horse can either go faster or the horse can go faster and then run into the end of the halter rope. Right there, I'm asking her to step back, get into neutral. Sit, stay. So if you're working with dogs, it'll be sit, stay. I didn't ask her to run off. I want her to go in there and sit and stay and get into neutral. So that's like a little obedience drill. You get, you have to have high, a high level of obedience here. There's nothing wrong with saying you need to have obedience. But a lot of trainers get obedience, but they they don't have that rapport because they act like a drill sergeant right there. See, now I'm going to go ahead and rub on her and kind of, kind of love on her a little bit there. There we go. So I'm just going to jiggle, jiggle the rope just a little bit. See how little it would take to get her to back up. Now I'll do a little more there and get those feet to, to start to back. She got a little crooked there. See, I see if I can get her, get her straightened out and then start again. She's still still working at these things. This is still new for her on the longer rope. But twice the rope is twice the difficulty. And you need twice the feel to get the horse to respond. It takes a lot to get that horse to respond to you from a distance. So horses are, are uh, good at judging distance in the sense that they know the effective range of a predator. If a predator's a mile away, they go, that, that thing can't get me from over there. As the predator starts creeping up, they go, oh, I better pay attention. That predator's getting closer. Same thing right here. With a domestic horse, they, they would say, you can't move me from over there. There's nothing you could do. I, can, I don't have to move my feet. And you might say, oh, I don't think so. I can get you from over here. I can get you to move. Let's see if I can get her to think about hiding that hind quarter and getting straight. There it is. Good. And then I'm going to ask her to step back again. 
So the idea is to be particular. So you don't want to be absolutely critical about every little thing, but you might be particular about little things here and there. There we go. I just had to make it kind of difficult for her to want to leave. See, she wanted to leave instead of instead of to get back and get straight. So can you do this with your horse? Can you get your horse to step back on, the, on that long rope? You can use a long lunge line. This is a slightly heavier line. This is about like a half inch or maybe it's like a 9 16 yacht rope. So it's a little heavier. It's got some feel to it instead of like a little ribbon lunge line. So right there I had a bumper nose with that snap because she didn't quite pay attention. She thought that meant for her to leave. So that's okay. Can you cause your idea to become their idea? So now she's working at getting her getting away. Do I want to go left? Do I want to go right? I'm saying, that's all right, but roll that hind quarter over and look at me. Roll that hind quarter over and look at me. There, and stop and get straight. Roll that hind quarter over and look at me. There, stop and get straight. Oh, on we go again. Here we go. So I'm going to roll that hind quarter and ask her to turn and look at me. There we go. And we're going to try again. So you got to keep that rope out so you don't get your foot caught in it. That's the way. <laughs> See, I'm showing you kind of what you what might happen. See, this is what you might experience with with a high energy horse. See, horses get confused. See, she doesn't understand exactly what I'm asking for here. But all I have to do is get her to try. See, I have to get her get her what to get her ready to try. See, all I have to do is get her in a position where she's ready to back up. So I got to get her stopping straight there. And see, that's when I take the pressure off. And then I'm just real gentle. See how little it would take. There. Okay, so now we've got a figure eight set up here. We can work her through. I've got her on the longer line. This idea behind a figure eight here is to see if we can get that horse to go through that barrel, through the middle of it, around one side, and then change direction, go through the other side, off a suggestion. We need to have the ability to move our horse's four quarters, move the hind quarters to get the horse to go forward, to get the horse to go sideways, to get the horse turn left and turn right a lot of things here that we have to be able to get done so this is a, one of those patterns you can either do it or you can't do it once you can do it you see how little it would take to get it done and maybe challenge yourself see how far away you can get it done can you get it done while the horse is at liberty that'll be a challenge but the idea is to build this relationship through different types of exercises through these patterns through these little games here to make it interesting for the horse and uh, as far as patterns go so you want to Work the pattern enough to where the horse can predict what you're going to be doing, but at the same time, you don't want the horse to be kind of automatic to where they're on autopilot all the time. They're just only going to do the pattern. So the idea is that if we're, we give them a job to do, the horse needs to complete the job without having to be micromanaged the entire time. At the same time, the horse should still be paying attention to our, to our cues. So the horse should still be feeling of us. So now you're seeing kind of what it might look like. See, she's not going to be perfect here right away, but I think we got some good ones here at the end. So now some of these horses want to knock those barrels over. So I'm going to see if I can get her to come around that barrel. Draw her to me. Send her around the other barrel. There we go. Change direction. Change your hands on the stick right there. She went around the wrong way. That's okay. I had to go fix my barrel here. You can use plastic barrels. You can use metal barrels. You can use rocks, whatever you want to use. Here we go. See if we can direct her and support with that stick. And I'll have to change my hands back up a little bit. There. Get her to go the other way. So get her to go around that barrel to the left. All the way around. And now I'll step back a little bit. So right there she wants to run the barrel over. So I got to get her around the barrel. Stopping right there. See if she can get get this idea. If I can get this idea across to her. Here we go. We're going to go around that barrel to the right and change our hands and go around the other way. A little bit here, you're going to see me do this on horseback. There we go. We got her going around that way and we can change, change direction here. Get her thinking. So you have to get her looking first. Get her prepared and in a position. And then we get her feet to respond. So we need to get her prepared. So she's thinking about doing it before we do it. See, most of the time we don't know our horse is going to do things for us until the horse already does it. The same goes the opposite. We don't know the horse is going to do, do something bad until they've already done it. The idea is 
is to, to change things before the horse does it. So we need to redirect our horse before they make the mistake, or in this case, we need to reward our horse before they did something good. So it's almost like the horse is rewarding himself. And we're not going to make this into a drill. See, it's not the figure eight drill. It's sort of the figure eight game here. And the game is, look where I look. When I look at that barrel, you look at the barrel. Here we go. As soon as you get the horse to play the game, you might quit. Because if you go, do longer, the horse ends up kind of getting bored. See, the horse sees it as a job instead of a game. There we go. So now we've kind of got some good things going. So the next video, we're going to we'll do some a little more groundwork and then do some riding.